Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video I'll be showing you some of the rendering and visualization updates that you'll find in Rhino 6 for Mac. Here I have a model in rendered display mode and one of the big updates is that you now have soft shadows on the ground plane and between objects. You can also customize the finish of materials such as the polish value for metal materials. The display panel available to you in the right sidebar through the gear drop-down list will have commonly used settings for any active display mode. If you're looking for more settings for any display mode, you can use the rhinoceros drop-down menu, preferences, and then the display modes section. In the rendering panel, also new to Rhino 6 for Mac, you'll have a number of areas that will impact what you get when you run the render command. The two sections that will have the biggest effect on the rendered display mode will be the background section and the lighting section. Here you can enable or disable the infinite ground plane, which is new for Rhino 6 for Mac. And you can also open up its settings here in case you'd like to give it a material. The default setting is to only catch shadows and what you see will be the solid color or background environment. You can also enable a custom environment for any reflective materials. And these can come from the Rhino 6 for Mac material library. You can also enable or disable a new sun light source and the skylight, skylight's intensity, and the color of the skylight, which will come from a custom environment if you choose to use this option. In the materials panel, you'll find a number of changes, namely that materials are now docked in this materials panel and not in a separate interface. If you click the plus symbol, you can import a material from our library, which is over 1400 materials, many of which contain texture maps, or you can start from a simple template. This gold material, for instance, was started from a metal template. It has a color, a polish value, and the ability to add some simple bump textures. This glass material was started from the glass template. It has a slider to control how frosted it is, as well as its color. If you want to change the index of refraction, you can pick a new one by material from this drop-down list. If you open a material from the library, you'll be directed to the Render Content section, which is searchable. If I select Render Content as the area I want to search, and I display by icons, I can see thumbnail images of the RMTL or Rhino Material files I can choose from. The texture maps get downloaded on demand, so if you'll be offline and want to have all of them available to you, you can use the command Download Library Textures beforehand to grab them all at once. There's another display mode that's new in Rhino 6 for Mac called Ray Traced. And the Ray Traced display mode will create an actual rendering where light bounces around and through refractive materials in the scene. The grain that you see is the sample count, and this will smooth out over time. You can set the sample count with this control in the lower right hand corner of the view. Or you can go into Preferences, Command Comma, Cycles section. If you want to save the image that you get in the view, either in Rendered Display Mode or Ray Traced or any other view, you can use the command View Capture to File or View Capture to Clipboard. I'm going to go back into rendered display mode here and open up my preferences to show you one element of the cycle settings that can be valuable to know about. Every computer will have a CPU to calculate ray traced mode, but if you have a supported graphics card, you can use CUDA or OpenCL to speed up the ray traced process. So check your device options on your computer. 
Another panel you'd find useful in visualization is called the Named Views panel. And the Named Views panel lets you save thumbnail images that you can double click to return to at a later time. The last element that I'd like to show you is the texture mapping updates. If I select this one object and let's go into shaded mode, you can see it has a number of surface edges and separate surfaces within the poly surface. I'm going to apply a custom material that has a checker texture on it, and I'll go back into rendered display mode. The checker texture smoothly flows over the breaks in the poly surface, so all of the separate seams within the poly surface due to the fact that it has a custom texture map. If I select the object, go into the properties panel, then the texture mapping section, I can display the UV editor. And the UV editor lets me see what the flattened render mesh or UVs of the object look like. If you use this icon in the texture mapping properties, you can unwrap the model, selecting seams in the poly surface or edges in a mesh that will rip apart in the flattening of the render mesh. In this way, you can customize how materials with textures flow across complex poly surfaces. And those are just a few of the rendering and visualization updates that you'll find in Rhino 6 for Mac. Thanks for watching.